Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the 2023 all-new Suzuki GSX 8S. This is a really cool naked bike that is going to be a bike that has a little bit more power than the typical beginner bike would go for, but this is such an easy to ride bike, I would still recommend it for beginners. So in this review, we are gonna go completely in depth and talk about all the technologies and features on this bike. And I wanna thank McLean Sports for giving me complete access to their entire product line. So if you're watching this video and I don't cover some of the things that you want me to cover, they give me complete access to their entire product line here. So I can come back to this bike, back to other bikes to make sure that you get the answers you want. So if you're in Fredericton, New Brunswick, McLean Sports, they've got Suzuki, they've got KTM, they've got a whole bunch more brands and we're gonna have them all on this channel so make sure you subscribe let me know in the comments below what you want to hear and give this video a like so McLean Sports can see that you're happy that I'm filming these bikes for you so let's get going with this in-depth review so let's start by talking about what this bike is. This is an all new engine, an all new bike for them, and it fits a really important niche in the market. It's a step down from their full on sport bikes. It's in a fairly affordable package, but it's a step up from some of the competitors in engine size and performance. It also has a whole bunch of technology that you used to see on higher end bikes brought down into this bike. So what this bike is, is a bike built for fun. Now what's cool about this is yesterday we reviewed the V-Strong. I reviewed the 650, but the V-Strom also has this all new engine in it. And on that bike, we talked a lot about its practicality. And if you want a bike that does everything very well and is super practical, the V-Strom is your bike. But throwing that V-Strom engine, again, not the one we did yesterday, but this engine in this bike, allows you to have a bike that is a little bit less about overall practicality and all about fun. Things like a quick shifter up and down, things like the technology in this bike, and just the general handling and feel of this bike means that this is an absolute blast to ride. And it sacrifices a little bit of the practicality of something like that V-Strom in order to make it just an absolute blast. So if you're looking for a bike that's a lot of fun, this is gonna be something that works out. It's fairly compact in size. We're gonna show you what it looks like with me on top of it on you know so you can see sort of the size perspective but it also has a lot of technology and that's really what I want to focus on on this review so we'll start with just sitting me throwing me on it showing you the size the ergonomics talking about that and then we'll move our way through all the pieces and parts to explain why it could be great for you and like I said this is a bike that even though it has a little bit larger displacement than the typical beginner bike it may be a beginner bike for you because it's not something that you're going to feel like it's not enough power not something you sell that you're going to feel like you have to move on on from but it has some really key features that make it really easy to ride and I think that makes it a real winning package for Suzuki so let's take a look what it looks like with me on top of this let's talk about ergonomics so the ergonomics of a bike really matter. And a bike like this basically is a sport bike with a comfortable riding position. And if you've ever ridden a full on sport bike, especially the modern sport bikes now, they're really geared for racetrack riding and they're absolutely a blast on the street. They're great for that, but they can be less comfortable. When you focus something so much towards a racetrack performance, you can lose some comfort. And you can see with this one, it is a very nice upright seating position. So first of all, you have kind of a wide feeling front end. It feels like a bit of a muscly kind of bike, but you have a very narrow seat in the front here, which allows you to easily put your feet down. I'm about six feet tall, but you could be well shorter than me and still have flat feet here. And then when you tuck up into a position, you still have that sort of sport bike kind of angle to your seat. You're not sitting there out like this, uh, like you would on sort of like a you know comfort kind of bike. This is still very comfortable, but it gives you the high ground clearance in cornering, all the clearance you're gonna need, not just for the street, but even on the track. And it allows you to have a sporty, but comfortable feel. You have a slight forward lean, which, you know, there's really no weight on my hands at all. You know, this would be fully upright. This would be a slight forward lean, but you want a little bit of a forward lean in a naked bike, something without a windshield here, because that wind pressure is gonna hold you up a little bit. And that makes it really, really comfortable at speed. Now, wind pressure is something you're gonna face here, but it also gives you that kind of lightweight feeling of maneuverability. So overall, very lightweight, easy to tip back and forth. You got about a 14 liter fuel tank here. So you have enough range to do all the fun weekend riding that you're gonna do. But again, not having a massive, massive tank like the V-Strom with his 20 liter tank, uh, at least the 650 that we looked at yesterday, you keep the weight down even when your tank is full. And what that means is you've got a really fun handling bike. And we're gonna look at some of the components on here, how the lower center of gravity, uh, some of the things they've done with that make it fun to ride as well. But I can tell you that this 
upright seated position, fairly commanding position here. You've got the mirrors out here that do clear my arms and elbows and the good size there. And then again, a really nice TFT display out front. So you've got all the information you need. You really feel like you're on a modern bike and in control. And that makes sense because this is an all new bike, all new engine, all new display. Everything about this bike is new. So overall seating position, if you want something that's fairly comfortable and upright, but still very sporty, that's what this bike is. Let's start with the front wheel and work our way back and start talking about some of the technology in this bike. So when we look at the front end of a bike, I always say when you look at the front tire, the front wheel area, you can really tell the purpose of this bike. And let's start here with the tires. You've got the Dunlop Road Sport 2 tires. Now you could put cheaper Dunlops on this bike, but Suzuki went and chose the one that was kind of the upper end of the class. So again, some bikes in this class are gonna have a Dunlop tire that's similar, but a little bit less good. This is a pretty good tire. And again, you're always trying to hit price points on a bike like this, but again, you're not really cheaping out on the tires. For the class, this is sort of a standard upper end tire from the manufacturer. It's in a size that of course you could always upgrade, you know, do whatever you want with. Uh, if you want a more touring tire, or if you want a more of a sport tire, you can do that. So that's always good. And then overall you have some nice things here. So you've got the upside down forks here. So the upside down forks do a couple things. One, they just look cool. They look like a modern sport bike. Two, they do add some benefit overall. You've got less unsprung weight here uh, by having the sort of upside down forks here. And then you also have radial mount calipers. So that is something that you don't traditionally see with the mounting in like here and here. You don't traditionally see that until a much higher performance bike. So again, looks cool, but also adds some stiffness. You've got large du dual calipers here. Uh, it says on the Suzuki website, 30 millimeters. I think it's 300 millimeters. So it's about, um, you know, this typical uh, traditional size for uh, this kind of a sporty type bike. You've got the ABS ring in there. So you have the proper ABS in there as well. And overall, it looks super cool with these alloy wheels that are in this blue color. You can get this bike in several colors, but this blue color really pops and these wheels kind of make the whole bike stand out. So cool styling here, cool functionality as well. And again, you don't need radial mount calipers here for the extra stiffness. I mean, if you're probably not going to notice the difference at all on a regular ride, but you have got higher end components. So again, it doesn't feel like a budget bike, but it's still a very affordable bike for what it is in its class. Let's move our way back and take a look at a few things there. So taking a look at the heart of this bike is this all new engine, 776 CC. This is a parallel twin engine instead of a V twin like Suzuki used to make in the past with like the SV650 or as I uh, pointed out in yesterday's video, in the V-Strom 650. So you have a little bit more CCs in here. It's, you know, the eight indicates it's close to 800 CC. It's actually 776 CC, but it's still a very compact engine. That 776 CC is a bigger engine than many of its competitors. A lot of the 600 range, 650 range uh, parallel twins. This one takes you a little bit bigger. And the way they've designed this engine is to feel a little bit more like that V-twin engine. It has the 270 degree crank. And what that does is it means it's a little bit more uneven than the 150. So it sounds cooler. It produces power a little bit differently. And it's got cool or good torque down low, torque in the mid range, but still has power up top. And torque down low and in the mid range is really what you want on a bike like this. You're not gonna be driving this at top revs all the time. You're gonna be keeping it in that mid to upper revs, that kind of thing. And this engine is perfect for that. And the other thing they've done is they have what Suzuki calls the shortest exhaust they've ever done. So what they do is have a real tight, compact area here. What this does is keeps all of that weight down low. You've got your emissions controls essentially underneath the bike. That's the heavy stuff. So rather than bringing your pipe up here and adding extra weight up high, everything is down low. So even if you look at the weight of this bike, it's you know under 450 pounds for sure. I can't remember the exact spec but the way the weight is centralized makes it feel lighter than it is, makes it feel more maneuverable. What's cool about the frame here is it just kind of looks cool when you see it up close, but I love the blue color. They integrate the blue frame from the, there, the, uh, the trellis setting here. So you've got cool styling as well as having good functionality in there. So uh, you got steel foot pegs, so, or the aluminum probably, I'm not sure if they're steel or aluminum, but they um, you know, give you that sport bike kind of feel there. You don't need the rubber mounts on this bike because the engine has good vibration cancellation in there so you've got a nice kind of direct feel and again this is all about feeling it experiencing the whole ride these will allow you to do that and uh, you know just make it a lot of fun take a look at the back end of this bike there's one thing I love and one thing I'm not sure that you guys are going to love so the thing I love is the tire on the back here it's a 180 width tire a lot of bikes in this class are gonna have that 160 or so so you know a lot of thousand cc bikes have a 180 wide tire so it looks like a much bigger bike than it is it gives you cool styling and it also gives you a lot of tire on the road which is a pretty cool thing so again cool styling that's kind of what matters there 
where they go a little bit away from the styling. I'm not someone who needs to put a fender eliminator on every bike I have, but if you were to do a fender eliminator here, taillights here, not up there, which is a unique way to do a motorcycle right now. Uh, that means if you do a fender eliminator, you're going to have to spend a little bit more money to have that taillight integrated. I'm sure there'll be all sorts of components in there. And like I said, I'm not someone who does all that kind of stuff. Does, this doesn't bother me in person, but I know for some of you, it is going to be something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, LED lights all around, which is kind of nice. Passenger seat, it is what it is for a naked bike. You can certainly take a passenger. You've got the foot pegs there as well. Um, you know, this is nice to fit a tank bag in there as well. Obviously, this is designed as a primarily single rider bike, but you can absolutely take a passenger as well. So we're gonna talk about the lighting at the back. We gotta talk about the lighting at the front. So one thing I like is this is kind of a, almost a KTM type theme. KTM went with this kind of insect looking thing and from the top down and just having these extra pieces here, it has very much of an insect looking thing. And what I think is cool is this looks different than regular bikes right now. And that means it's gonna be more modern looking. You've got a really nice headlight here with a sharp cutoff. Again, it's much more automotive like in, uh, you know, modern automotive, they have these sort of individual headlights behind a little bit of piece of glass in here. And then of course you have the high beam as well, which is a second beam. They both stay on together. So quality LED lights, really compact in look and feel. And that means from the driver's area, you know, the huge sort of fairing out front. So super compact in its look, but also super effective. The styling, some people are gonna like it, some people aren't. I gotta admit in person, it looks better than it does on camera just to me, cause it looks like something different. And to me, it looks more modern. You've got some daytime running lights in there as well. I don't know if you can see them well on camera, but that's that kind of comes up and of course you have your signal lights here which of course are also full LED uh, front and rear. So before we take a look at the dash on here, which is super cool, I want to talk about some of those technologies and a couple of them make it easier to ride as a newer rider. And even if you're not a newer rider, still makes it easy to ride. And to me, a bike that's easy to ride is fun to ride. So let's just talk. I'm going to use the website right here to, to, to cheat. I didn't show you the shifter on this side, but it is a bi-directional quick shifter. That is not typical in this class. And what that means is you're going to use your clutch to get out of first gear, you know, to, to get into first gear, excuse me, as you get going, you're gonna use that clutch. And we'll talk about that clutch in a second. But beyond that, you can shift both up and down clutchless. What it does is it cuts the ignition timing for just that split second as it senses you shifting, and you can just whip through the shifts up and whip through the shifts down. So it gives you that race bike feel. And again, remember what we said off the top, this bike isn't totally about practicality. You got the v strong for practicality. So this is about fun. And to have a quick shifter up here, up and down quick shifter is pretty cool. Next thing that uh, Suzuki mentions here is their traction control system. I think that's an important thing on a modern bike. So it's got three levels of traction control, off, one and two. Actually, it might have a couple more. We'll check that in the dash in a second. But the idea is you can sort of set it to that one or two setting and give it the gas hard and you're gonna, it's gonna work to prevent wheel spin. In the rain, traction control is really helpful. You can just set it to a max setting. If you go to the racetrack, you don't want any traction interference at all, you can set your traction control off. But it is something that, you know, if you give yourself a little bit uh, too much throttle, it's going to protect you a little bit or work to protect you a little bit. Where I think it's really helpful is as you start riding in cooler weather. If you get used to the bike with warm tires and all of a sudden you get going on a cool morning with cool roads, sometimes the traction's not there like you need to. Traction control's there just to assist you. So that's a pretty cool system as well. Let the handlebar fall back there. All right, ride by wire electronic throttle. Now this is interesting to me because this is something you kind of need with a quick shifter to really make it work well, but it gives you a really precise throttle control, which means that as you spin the throttle, it's not just a throttle cable, which means that on off adjustment isn't really a problem. You've got a really good system there that allows you to have that smooth sm throttle transition. Again, not something you typically see in a bike of this class. And then we're gonna talk about ABS brakes. Every bike pretty much in this class has them. They're great. That's what works. But the other co cool thing is Suzuki, Suzuki's easy start system. So it's a tap of the start button rather than holding it down. Kind of makes it cool. Works like a push button start in most modern cars. Uh, you know, is it functional for a lot of people? I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but it's kind of cool. Feels very modern. And again, it's a modern bike. The last piece here though is, I keep forgetting the name of it, so I'm gonna call it, they don't even have a name for it, low RPM assist. And they write, as it helps maintain engine idle speed for smoother and easier starts. What that means is if you're a newer rider and you kind of have that jerky start or sometimes you're stalling it a little bit, that happens on a newer bike and it can happen as you're nervous about the power on a bigger bike. You know, you kind of feather that clutch a little bit differently than you would if it's just a low power bike where you can just dump the clutch and go. If you have this bike, it smooths out that clutch uh, process and it can actually add revs through that electronic throttle. So if you didn't have enough revs and you would have stalled it, it'll just give you the revs that you need or work with you to give you the revs you need to help you avoid stalling it, to help you avoid sort of having that jerky start. 
And that's where this bike, you know, with all those features combined, things like the electronic throttle and the traction control and those kinds of things, and that clutch sort of low, assist, low RPM assist, what that does is it takes a bike with that 776 cc's parallel twin, uh, you know, rumors it's 80 plus horsepower, I don't know the exact spec on that, but it makes it far more approachable in situations where newer riders or new to this class of bike may be intimidated. It takes some of the intimidation out and helps you out. And I think that makes it super cool. Now let's go take a look at the dash. So before I turn on the bike, or at least turn on the uh, dash, I want to show you just a few things you've got. You've got the controls here, we're going to take a look at them in a second, but again, everything's within easy reach. And then you've got this nice handlebar here. I like handlebars over clip-ons for a lot of bikes because you can do things like put, throw your phone on there, throw a GPS, throw other devices on there. You've got the ability to just clip something on. You have enough space here, in between here, out on there. And it is a nice thick handlebar. I believe that's a lo an aluminum handlebar, so again, lighter weight, but a little bit thicker as well. Uh, works well. What's really cool though, is you turn on the dash and you've got the Suzuki logo coming up. And the graphics on this are very, very good. Now it does say service again. This is something that uh, is still at the dealership, hasn't gone through the full process here, but check out this TFT dash. What I love about it is if you, if you like an analog tachometer, it still gives you exactly that. And the reason this is good is it's very simple and recognizable. You can tell exactly where you are in the rev range at a glance. You don't have to read them at 4,000 RPM. You can see roughly where you are compared to Redline. And that's awesome. I mentioned the traction control earlier. It does have um, three levels of traction control and off. So I consider that to be four levels of traction control in there. You've got a number of different features we can cycle through on the bottom. So you've got trip one, trip to, uh, uh, there's your uh, instant fuel economy, or sorry, average fuel economy. Uh, trip two, and there's your fuel efficiency for that. And then you've got distance to empty, and, or sorry, like your range, and then you also got your instant fuel economy. So those were average fuel economies, instant fuel economies. Again, dealership bike with one kilometer, do not um, worry about this. That service thing was telling you that you had 999 kilometers to service it. So that was what that was uh, on the way up. So the thousand kilometer service, that first service of every motorcycle is an important one. Uh, but overall, this dash is excellent. You can see you have your gear indicator there. Now I didn't mention with the quick shifter earlier, but I should mention it here. The quick shifter is something that you can turn on or off on this bike. So if you want it to be a quick shifter where you don't have to use the clutch, you can set that up, but you can also turn that off here. Good warning lights, great clarity, good lighting on this uh, display. And even though I'm in an area of relatively high glare, you can see that this is a very easy to read dash. Uh, they just choose good fonts and they widen things out a little bit. Like the speedometer uh, is widened out a little bit. Even the clock is kind of widened out, but it's very crisp, very easy to read um, uh, dash here. So very, very good overall. Quite happy with the way um, Suzuki does this uh, on a TFT display. TFT displays aren't for everybody, but this one is very, very good. Take a look at the left side handlebar here. Simple, simple controls here. So you've got a little flash to pass right over here, my trigger finger right there, and you can push that on to leave your high beams on. And again, the headlights on this, the, the little uh, LED sort of modules on the front there are very, very good. Very sharp cut off very clear white light. And I should point out that that white LED light is really good because it's closer to a daylight in color. So it helps your eyes recognize things at night. So super easy to operate that. Uh, and even just to get people's attention, just to flash that in a hurry. I really like that. Also, Su uh, Suzuki does a good job with their controls here. These are big enough to be operated with gloves, but they're small enough to be within reach of everything. So you can switch through here. You can change your traction control, change the settings in the dash very easily all through here. And you're not stretching to do it, right? You can just tap up and get it while you're in whatever riding position you're in, your hand's always going to reach there. So I like that as well. Signals down there, horn down there, typical stuff. Let's flip around to the other side just for a quick second. So right side handlebar over here, you can see you've got a few things here. Your starter switch is your kill switch. So you can push that down. Again, it's just a single tap of it and it will start the bike and you have the kill switch there. Now I like having hazard lights on a motorcycle and this actually makes some sense. If you have an issue uh, mechanically, you've got your hazard lights right next to your kill switch, but it's also a spot where you can you know, uh, easily reach it and it doesn't stay in the way of the controls that you're gonna use every day. Hazard light is not something you use a ton of the time. I like it when I pull over on the side of the road just to be able to flash those extra signals, not just a single signal to get extra visibility. Um, but yeah, having it there on your throttle side is great. And again, because it's that electronic throttle, there's just no play in that throttle. It's really precise all the time. Let's flip around and show you the brake lever for just one quick second on the front brake right over here. So take a look at the brake lever right here. You've got a cool little system, which is an adjustable brake lever. So you can put it sort of where you want. So let's put it in the number one position. You can see it's uh, you know, a certain distance out from my hands. Now let's bring it all the way over to the number five position. 
and you can see it's much, much closer. So it's this knuckle here with the number five position, or you push it out there and you go all the way back to the number one position right there, and it's the knuckle out. So it really has a lot of adjustment, so you can put that brake lever exactly where you want to have it to grab it, whether it's two finger, several fingers, whatever you want to do, you can adjust it out. No adjustment on the clutch lever on this bike, but you do have the adjustment on the brake lever. And again, for really precise feel, again, with those radial mount calipers, pretty good precision here. Um, you've got the ability to adjust that, which is nice. So let's talk about who this bike is for. Well, first of all, I'm a guy who loves practical bikes, but I drive a naked bike. Why? Because they're so much fun. And you can make a naked bike practical. You're not gonna do huge, long, multi-day tours on this without a windshield and without you know ma major crazy luggage, but that's what the V-Strom is for in this lineup. This bike, you could throw a tail bag on here. You've got some, you know, decent seating position that you can still ride for a long time, but this is all about fun. And the value in this bike is really there. So I think this bike appeals to a huge range of riders. If you're a newer rider that doesn't wanna have to sell your first bike to move to your second bike, I think this has really good uh, features for you. You've got something that you can ride as a newer rider with the traction control, with that low speed assist clutch, those kind of things, and with the approachable seating position that also sits you upright and comfortable and aware of traffic. You're not crunched over and having to look over your shoulders. You're sitting in a good position to see traffic. So I think all of that works for a newer rider, but this is also something that gives you more high-end components, a fantastic dash, the digital throttle, the up-down quick shifter. All of those things are things you can grow into or enjoy right off the bat. And why do you buy a motorcycle? Because you wanna have fun. There are people that need a motorcycle to be super, super practical, but if this is something that you probably have a car and you wanna use on weekends and evenings and go for fun rides, this is a great value. And what I love about it is being all new, all new with this engine, all new with a sort of design and style, new dash in here, you've got something that feels and is fully modern. The lighting, hey, you're not maybe a big fan of this, but you've got great LED lighting. Same with the look in the front. Some people are gonna like it, some people aren't. What I like about it is it looks modern, it looks different, it looks higher end. You've got those wider wheels. That, again, this bike looks higher end than it is, or certainly higher end than the price tag it is. So why buy this bike? Because you want something that's really fun. If you're a newer rider, I don't think this is too intimidating for you. If you're an experienced rider, as we all know, this is probably all the power you need for the street. Sure, you can buy a GSX-R and you know, have fun on a racetrack, but on the street, this has got more power than many of its competitors. It's a more modern platform than many of its competitors. With that centralized weight, it keeps it easy to handle. This is a really intriguing package that I think is underrated. So there's my review of this bike, the GSX-8S. If you wanna know something more about it that maybe I left out or wanna see more details, let me know in the comments below because I'll make sure I come back to this bike. And again, I wanna thank McLean Sports. There's a link in the description to reach them. They're here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. There are all kinds of bikes here and we're gonna film pretty much everything they have to make sure that you have it out here. And if you're not from Fredericton, hey, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. If there's things you wanna see about Suzuki Line, KTM lineup, and a whole bunch more. I've also got a whole bunch of other dealers that I work with that have all kinds of bikes that we can throw on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.